it's shoddy welcome back so today is an office day there has been a confluence of activity i left home a little later than usual so then i got to my office a little later than usual and i have a client coming in earlier than usual so i am just going to start oops, jumping in with doing my makeup so I actually brought in my Yummy Skin Blurring Balm. This is the problem when I have this. I feel like it's all I use, but it's amazing. So, Chad, let me pull up my notes on the news that I have consumed this past week. Cause some of it, I was like, girl, this is too much. Okay, I think the first thing is, why does every generation like reinvent the wheel? Let me tell you what I mean. So I was looking at something, the news, <laughs> and they were like, um, there's this new thing going on called the girl dinner. I was like, what is that? Because first I'm like, it's something misogynistic. Um, and it's it's just going to be something weird. Ciao. Basically, a girl dinner. I'm going to go in with this um, NYX concealer as primer for the eyelids. So surprised that none of my other, none of my sweet makes are here. The only one here early today, which is new. Let me, let me tell you what it is because I, I wrote it down. So how I see it is, to me, it's just a, it's a charcuterie board. Like, it's just snacks that you put together to make a dinner, to make a meal. So the woman who, like, came up with it is, <laughs> like... Being alone is part of the experience. Noting that the snack plate variation is what she'll eat when her boyfriend is out of the house in an effort to save time on preparing dinner. Problems with that, I'll come back to it. I don't need to make meat and vegetables and starch or whatever. I'm not gonna get something big. I'm just gonna like eat whatever I can. Like hunt and gather from my own kitchen. First of all, so apparently homegirl only cooks when her boyfriend is around, which that's fine. And then she's making it sound like it's this like new discovery of like the atom or something. Girl, we all have girl dinners all the time. It's just you go in the fridge and get a couple snacks and that's your dinner. What the, why do we have to name something when it's literally what all of us have been doing Forever. I've never called it a girl dinner. I'm just like, I'm gonna have some pretzels for dinner and maybe like an apple slice or something. You know, like this is just what I'm cobbling together. So I just, I guess she's saying like you put it on a board and like present it in a nice way. Child, if you don't just give me them pretzels and some little, like a little can of peanut butter and just, I'll hold everything in my hand. I don't need to put it on a, on a board to make it look cute. I'm gonna just eat it. So these shades are all from the Lethal Cosmetics um, Wildfire palette. I think I'm gonna go in with this one first. Child, so when I saw that, cause I was like, what is a girl dinner? I wonder what that is. It just screams misogyny and ridiculousness. Like that's, that's what I'm hearing from this. That's what I'm hearing. The other thing that, tell me what you think about that. Like, do you have girl dinner and is that what you call it? And if it is what you call it, by all means, continue to call it that. But let me know what you call it. I just call it dinner. <laughs> I just call it food. Like today when I get home, I'm probably gonna have some crackers and cheese and like, I think I have some cherries and like a glass of water. Like that's gonna be dinner. So is that a girl dinner? No, nah, that's just what I'm gonna eat when I get home. <sighs> the other thing, with inventing the wheel, reinventing it, is there's something called bed rotting. B-E-D, bed, rotting, R-O-T-T-I-N-G. Just when I read that, I was like, oh my God, what is that? It sounds disgusting, let me read it. And basically, 
<laughs> Let me see if I put any quotes. Now, this person, whoever came up with it, Gold is one of the many TikTok users who are weighing in on the latest viral self-care term, in which users post videos of themselves tucked under layers of blankets, oftentimes with a phone or snack in hand. The phrase, bed rotting, describes staying in bed all day by choice, thereby rotting there, according to Gold, an assistant professor of psychiatry at Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, Missouri. That's a good school. <sighs> oh, maybe she's just talking about it. She said, I think it's okay to do if you need, and I have let myself do it, as long as you understand why you are doing it and turn to other coping skills as well. Duh, Dr. Gold. Bed rotting is similar to having a lazy day, but... It's more of an immobile term with less activity. So basically, apparently having a lazy day means that you're like, you're like having a chill day, but you're also being active, I guess. Child, bed rotting. I, I thought that it was somehow like, you know, people who don't clean their sheets enough and like their bed starts to rot or something from like <laughs> bacteria and stuff because i was like oh let me find this out let me read it um bed rotting child that's a saturday morning for me that's a saturday morning me sitting in my bed with my phone under the covers if it's winter if not i'm under a sheet or under nothing and maybe a snack Maybe a coffee, maybe a sandwich, maybe, again, an apple or some cherries. Like, so basically I'm bed rotting? Like, wh what? Why did they do this? Did we do this? Did our generation do this? I'm pretty sure we did because it seems like every generation does. Like, why, why does there need to be a term for this? Why does there need to be a term for girl dinner and for bed rotting? Like, child, you just having some dinner. Maybe it's not as nutritious as your usual one. And you just laying up, up in your bed. So apparently I bed rot all the time, girl. Maybe it has to be because you do it all day. I've done that too. Like, and instead of just a phone and or, or some snacks, it'll be a phone, some snacks, and a TV remote. I don't understand, y'all. What are some other things you feel like the newer, <laughs> younger generations are like just making up on the go? Things that we already used to do all the time and continue to do, but don't have a name for it. Like, if somebody calls and they're like, what'd you do today? Girl, I just stayed in bed, just relaxed. But now I'm be like, girl, I bed rotted and I had me a girl dinner. That's why sometimes with my younger clients, I'm like, what? What does that mean, girl? <laughs> what does that mean? Child. That's too much. So I'm going to go in with this bronzer shade from Lethal and maybe one of the purple mattes here. Um, how do I want to do this? Let's start with the bronzer shade. Child, I'm just like, y'all doing too daggone much. Bed rotting and girl dinner. It's too much. It's too much. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of it. It annoys me. It really annoys me. I don't like it. Child, and then there was this, there was this server who was doing her job like she always did. And apparently the people that she was serving, the patrons of the restaurant, restaurant they ran out on the bill. So it was like $100 or something. And her manager was like, you have to pay that. And she was like, I sure do not. So she left. She quit the job. But before she quit, she went ahead and took her tips that she had gotten for the day. Like, it was like $50. So she grabbed her tips. She walked out the, the restaurant. And then, I guess because you're supposed to leave the tips until the end of the night and count it and everything. And then, so she contacted them um, 
and was just like, oh, I, I took my tips. Can you just take it out of my next paycheck, like my last paycheck or whatever? But honey, the restaurant owner was like, I sure cannot. <laughs> just the way you couldn't pay that bill. And he had her arrested for $50. He had her arrested. I was like, that is a lesson in petty because <laughs> that is so petty because this woman could not probably could not afford to pay this hundred dollar meal price that these punk asses left for her like people don't realize when you do stuff like that the servers have to pay who you think gonna pay it the servers have to pay don't be an ass so she literally or they literally are like pressing charges against her for not for not paying the hundred but for stealing the 50. I would get me such a good lawyer. I would get me such a good lawyer and be like this is causing me emotional distress and somehow it's discrimination. I don't know how it is but it is. Like dang. <laughs> What am I doing? Okay, I'm gonna go in with the shade number nine for my, for all over my face. This other one, y'all, cause you know I like to talk about gender and stuff. This woman and her husband, they like went out, they had a good time and they came home and they took these online IQ tests. First of all, first of all, like, mm -hmm. The thing with online tests, they can give you like a sense of something, but you really should go to a, like a psychometrist or even a psychologist who does testing because if I get one more person who comes in and they're like, I have narcissistic personality disorder because that's what the, the online test said. Like, let's just talk about it. Let's just talk about it. It's online. We don't know if it's like you know, normed. It's, we don't know if it's validated and we don't know if it's reliable. And I have yet to have anyone who actually has narcissistic personality disorder come in and tell me that's what they have. No, not yet. Maybe it'll happen further down in my career, but not yet. <laughs> personality disorders are serious, dude. Like you can't just be throwing that stuff around. Like, anyway, there was a lot of talk about, um, the use of like traditionally psychological words how it's become like part of the nomenclature like and I think people have been talking about how therapy like can be harmful at times because if we like validate everything that someone comes in and says like oh I have a personality disorder or oh my parent is narcissistic like we really need to as therapists talk about what makes you think that like help me understand because we have diagnostic criteria for why we would use those words hey baby <laughs> um anyway so the lady and her husband they go ahead and take an online iq test i'm just gonna say it's probably not a valid and reliable iq test i've taken an iq test it, it's more than just clicking some buttons on the computer it's 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 more extensive but apparently she got a higher score than he did and child he got real upset. She said that he like started just walking about, not talking to her. He wouldn't kiss her anymore. And <laughs> like just, he was flirting with other people in front of her. Listen, if your flirting is going to get us a discount or something, by all means, I, I'm gonna encourage you to do it. Like, babe, go flirt with that girl so we could get a discount on this oil change. Cause listen, I use what I got, so I'm gonna need you to take one for the team. <laughs> Go ahead and get your flirt on. So he starts flirting in front of, of flirting with people in front of her, and all this madness. And she gets real upset, understandably so. 
And so she confronts him and she's like, I feel like ever since we took that test and I got high, higher than you, like you haven't really been interacting with me in the same way. Honey, he said, yeah, I'm not as attracted to you anymore. <sighs> You're not as attracted to me anymore because I got higher than you on this online test that really doesn't say anything. Like, IQ, yeah, can be important for certain things, but just because you have a lower score doesn't mean, like, like I'm a genius and you're an idiot. That's what I would tell him, though. Like, yeah, I'm the genius, genius and you an idiot. But it's just, like, it has to be in context of things. Like, why is it important for you to have a higher IQ than me. So not only not only that, but that also tells me that you don't respect me and you only like being with me if I'm like the dumb one. I I <laughs> And then he had the nerve to confirm it. Like, yeah, since we took that test and you got a higher score, I just I haven't been as attracted to you. But here's the thing. I don't know if y'all have experienced this. For some reason, people get intimidated by intelligence. Like, okay, I have a PhD. And in some situations, it's like, and? <laughs> I don't expect you to have one, too. Like, I don't think that makes you any less intelligent than I am. I'm just a little crazy and managed to spend, like, most of my life in school. Like... <laughs> Maybe I'm an expertise at some stuff, but that doesn't mean I'm an expert at everything. Child, y'all already know I can't work my way out of a paper bag. Like, I have no sense of direction. And maybe for psychological stuff, I'm going to be the one you want to come to. But ask me to give you directions. Ask me to fix a car. Ask me to do some, like, high function mathematical equation like i don't know child <laughs> so just because i have a doctorate the, the, like what is what does that mean but on the other hand there was this story where this lady goes to her it's either her sister or her cousin's wedding and they were at the rehearsal dinner and they had the little placard with their name on it and you know like your name and the guest now the lady who's telling the story, her and her husband are both doctors. Now, I think she has a PhD in like forensic psychology maybe, or it's something, something all technical. And I believe he is a medical doctor, maybe an MD, I don't even remember. But the, the bride put on the woman's placard, Miss, whatever. And the lady went up to her afterwards and was like, you know, I really wanted you to put doctor. Like, that's my title. And especially since the um, bride was like, it's a very formal occasion. So if it's formal, I need you to use my formal title. Okay? Like, anyway. So at first I was like, hmm, that's already shady. But then the shadier part. She she also didn't put doctor on the, the woman's husband. The shadier part is that she put doctor on some of the other guest placards. So this is personal. This is personal. Okay. All right. This is personal. And honey, apparently the bride was like, you're not even a real doctor. Like, what's the big deal? I'm sorry <laughs> you obviously want to fight because here's the thing a lot of people think that doctors are only MDs but in actuality the term doctor was first assigned to people who had PhDs that in like in academic settings that's where doctor came from medical people were not called doctors until much later so not a real doctor and do you know do you want to like get into a situation where you don't have a forensic psychologist like those people work effing hard okay they work hard and if there's some sort of crime and it's committed against you i'm gonna tell you you want a forensic psychologist to be coming in there and figuring out stuff but she was like you're not even a real doctor like what's the big deal you know who thinks i'm a doctor 
Joe Biden and everybody else because I have these student loans to prove it. If you don't, if you don't think, go ahead and look them up. I had, so what am I? What am I then if I'm not a doctor? And the other thing, the other thing, because this gets me, this gets me real heated because there is this history of people not necessarily respecting women doctors and don't get me started on people of color who are women, who are doctors. We often have our titles challenged. I cannot tell you the amount of times people will call my colleagues doctor and they'll call me by my first name. Do you go to your gynecologist and be like, hey, Sharon? No, no, you call her, him, doctor, so-and-so. But it's, it's like a whole thing. So when I walk into a room, it's not that I'm being stuck up or anything, but I'm going to need you to call me doctor, okay? I'm going to need you to do that because that's the respectful thing to do. I don't mind being called, like, miss whatever, mister. I, I literally don't care about that. But if we're in a professional setting I need you to what put some respect on my name that's what I need you to do this lady fired me up because not not you trying to devalue my entire education I'm about to use shade 10 to do a little bit of bronzer not you over here trying to devalue my entire education obviously you're jealous and I say that with all seriousness you're obviously jealous you don't think I'm a real doctor, but you won't. This is the thing. You didn't even do that for everybody. You put on other people thing, doctor so-and-so. So you have something against me because you didn't put it on my little placard. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to not put anything on your, like, list of gifts for the wedding. How about that? How about I not even come? Because I'm not a real doctor. I have other things to do to try to get to be one. That annoys me, like... How dare you, like, discount somebody's profession? And it's not even like she's like, I'm a doctor of underwater basket weaving. She's a doctor of forensic psychology. So she had to do a dissertation. She had to do all this stuff to get this title. That's why not everybody does it, because you have to do all this stuff. Speaking of people doing foolishness, let me know if you want to know more about my experience with people not calling me doctor when I'm a full on doctor and I've been one for quite a while now. Child, I had this student when I was teaching, they were like, they sent me an email, hey. As my parents will say, hey, it's a horses. Like, I don't, who you, who you, who you calling hey? Chad, I had to school that person in the email <laughs> and then I answered their question and told him you should have been paying attention in class because I mentioned it. Calling me, hey. You ain't getting an A. Last one. This 47-year-old woman went on like a safari or something. That's good. I kind of want to go on one one day went on a, a safari and you see these people begin in these animal space don't be get like we're on their land try not to disrupt things you don't need to take a picture with a, a hippopotamus you don't need to take a picture with a lion okay like stay in the car so that you don't get eaten because if you get out the car and they eat you it like who told you to get out that's like i was watching this Instagram reel of this guy he's a Jamaican guy and he's white so everyone's like there can be white Jamaicans yeah <laughs> it can be <laughs> so you know he he is often like joking about his racial identity along with his eth ethnic identity and he was talking about this woman swimming with this big ass shark like it's huge and he was like, so if the shark bites you or eats you, whose fault is it going to be? The shark who's doing what it's supposed to be doing. You're in its house in the ocean sea, whatever. Or is it going to be your fault? It's going to be your fault, girl. Why are you messing with them sharks? Anyway, so this lady goes and she like goes out to look at the animals 
turns her back and child a bison comes after her and just gores her ass like and I, I feel terrible for her because that has to hurt like animals are heavy and they're like aggressive at times especially when you're in their space and you're not respecting their space why are we over there why are you over there with like a flashing camera i don't know if she was but that i just imagine she was why are you over there with a flashing camera just so you could be like i took a picture with a bison girl that bison gonna chomp you down real real fast nom nom and just you're gonna be done for so now she all in critical condition because she out here messing around with these wild animals it makes me think of people who like be messing around with hippopotamus hippopotamuses hippopotami more than one hippopotamus and they be trying to like put their little kid up on the little gate and take a picture like smile for the camera Susie child and I saw that hippopotami they can like crush a pumpkin with their teeth. I can barely unpeel an orange and these things can crush a pumpkin just hushed. That's it, it's, the pumpkin is done. And I think, is it true? I think hippopotamuses are the most dangerous animal or something because they can crush you, they are heavy okay i here's the thing i don't need to get close to them i can see them from right over here i can see them mm -hmm. girl look at that if anything i could go ahead and get some virtual reality glasses or something i'm sure there's something on the internet that could allow me to feel like i'm i'm in its space you know without really having to be because i know you lying they be also doing that with lions, too. People be doing the most. Leave these daggone animals alone. We out here making stuff extinct. The world is already on fire, like literally. I cannot with this heat anymore, y'all. And here I am going to one of the hottest places for my birthday. I hope Kelly Clarkson got some air conditioner in that place because I just cannot. I cannot. Fooling with her. Fooling with people. I know I cannot. Okay, last thing. Did I say that before? Last thing. So have you heard of this thing called skip lagging? I don't know if this is another like generation making up words, but I had not heard of this until I saw that this young dude, like a late teenager, um, maybe early 20s actually, he was, you know, flying home to see his family like from college or whatever. And he got like singled out by the flight attendants and such at the gate. And they like canceled one part of his trip. I'm like, why do you do that? So apparently there's this thing that he was doing called skip lagging. And basically, let me see if I can explain it because I was a little confused at first. Anyway, it's you. Flyers have recently been fighting high airline prices by skip lagging, also known as hidden city ticketing. They're booking cheaper tickets with a layover at their real destination and skipping the second leg. So it's like if you book a flight from airport A to airport C and you get off at a layover at airport B, and skip the other flight. That makes sense? So it's like, if I book a flight from, let's say I wanna get to LA. No, yeah. 
let's say I want to get to LA. No, let's say I want to get to what's in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> let's say I want to get to Missouri. Okay, I'm going to book a flight to LA, but I'm gonna get off at my layover in Missouri because I want to get to Missouri, right? I think. Don't mind my explanation. You, you're trying to get from A to C and you stop in B and you get off the plane at B and you don't take B to C. So I had no idea this was a thing, but apparently like for some stuff, it can be like cheaper, I guess, for some flights. Because I think you get, do you get a credit back for that? I think you get a credit back for the flight that you didn't take. Child, I could be making all of this up, but look it up for yourself. It's called skip lagging. And I guess flights are, flight people, airline people, airline businesses are realizing that that's happening. And of course, the airline wants to make money, okay? So they don't want you skipping out and costing them money because here's the thing, they could have sold that other ticket to somebody else and caught them in an okie doke and made them pay for that, right? But now you costing them money. So they are not happy with it, girl. But I'm just letting you know in case it's important to you and, you know, just putting it out there. I'm not, I'm not encouraging or supporting you doing that, but the more you know. All right, let me do a quick lip. Girl, I got 10 minutes. Okay, let me be right back. So here is the finished look. Just something super easy. Um, yeah, that's it, girl. So hopefully some of this was helpful. I also hope that you're continuing to take care of yourself. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment. Have you heard any of these news stories? Tell me something that you've heard lately that's of interest to all of us. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.